Hello everyone, I'm Ahmed Gamal. I and my colleagues are going to talk about our security project. Our project is a steganography chatting application. Steganography is a type of encryption where files are hidden in other files. So for example, we can hide a textual message in an image or a video frame. Um, our application is a chatting application that allows the user to send messages to all other users. He, uh, the user can either send messages to all users uh, at the same time in a broadcast fashion, which acts like a room uh, chat room, or the user can send a private messages to other users. In this video, we will talk about, we will walk you through our application and we are going to explain the security features in our application. The first feature that I'd like to talk about is our peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, many chatting applications are designed in a centralized fashion and the main problem with these uh, centralized designs is that if an attacker gains access to the uh, cent uh, server that relays the messages, the attacker will then get all the messages and even if these messages are encrypted, it may be a matter of time before the attacker could decrypt these messages. Uh, the attacker could as well delay the delivery of messages or affect the availability of the server. That's why we decided to um, use a peer-to-peer -peer design in our application. And the way our application is designed that we have a server, but the main functionality of this server is to uh, exchange the IPs and the keys of the peers so they, they can communicate with each other. So whenever a new user uh, connects to uh, the network, the server notifies other users that now this new user became online and here are the user's IP, port and public key so you can communicate with this user and also whenever a user uh, disconnects from the network it notifies other users that this user is no longer available uh, so let's see our application in action and um, in this video we will use the terminal to demonstrate uh, our application and the security features and the terminal should be enough to demonstrate this features so in order to start our, our application we we'll first start the server now let's start a client so now it asks if I want to join, if I'm a new user or login. So I c I've created some users beforehand. So I'll just login. The username is Ahmed and the password is 123. So now it says welcome Ahmed and I'm connected to the uh, server. Uh, I'm going to run another client, but before running the client, I will change the port because I'm running all the clients on the same device. Uh, so I want to log in. My name is Delphi, and the password is one two three as well. So let's just create a third client so we can test this broadcast message. So I will log in. My name is Salma, and the password is one two three. <coughs> so now all the three peers are connected. So, if we would like to broadcast a message, for example, Ahmed would like to broadcast all messages, this is a broadcast message. So now here, uh, it's viewed Ahmed says broadcast message and Salma sees the same message as well and even Ahmed sees the same message, so it's like a room chat, a chat room, sorry. And now if you'd like to so privately to someone, so here for example, if you would like to say to Ahmed, hi, Ahmed. Now Ahmed sees this message, but Salma does not. So we can chat privately or um, send a broadcast message. And notice that the server does not see any of these messages. And also an advantage of our design that we can if the server is down for any reason, so here I close the server, these can still chat with each other. So for example, Salma can say to Ahmed, the server is down 
and the message would arrive to Ahmed even without the server because it's a peer to peer connection. So that's it with our peer to peer network, and now we're going to talk about other features. Hi, um, I'm Sanmal Jaki, and I'm going to walk you through the first feature of our security project, which is the authentication. Uh, for authentication, we have uh, usernames and passwords. So let's um, see the application running. Uh, first of all, I'm going to just run the client Python file. Okay, here we go. We have two options, join or login. So let's try first to register. So let's type join. And here it asks me for uh, the username. Okay. So, um, and now let's try to enter just Salma and ask me, ask me for the password, one, two, three. And here we go. Um, it's saying, welcome Salma. So let's see the database, what happens. Um, here in the database, we have here Salma is saved. This is the username. And uh, then after the column, we save the password. As you can see, it's uh, hashed. Uh, actually, it's appended with um, with a salt, and uh, then they are hashed together with uh, SHA. Okay, and here after the column, you can see uh, we have the generated salt. Okay, this is the salt. We keep it here with uh, the record for the username and password uh, in order to verify the user later on when uh, he or she logs in okay um here we have another um user we already uh, registered before with uh, jackie and uh, also the password and the uh, salt let's see what uh, how, how this happens in the code here we have um, in the handle passwords uh, file we have um okay yes here this function the hash password it takes the password that I entered, which is um, in our case uh, was one, two, three. Okay. And it generates a new uh, salt using the uh, function UUID. Okay. This is where we generate the salt. And then we append the password and the salt together and hash them using SHA. Okay. And then we return the hashed password and the salt. This is what this function does. Okay, then how do we add this in the database? Here we have another function, add user. Uh, it takes as an input a username and the password. It checks if the username and the users um, in our database, then uh, it just say uh, print the username uh, already exists. Else what it does, it um it add it save the user okay uh, this uh, record for the username with, together with uh, the password uh, hashed okay uh, in our database which is the passwords.txt file okay so uh, that's how we register a new um, a new um, a new client okay so let's try to register another client. Here I will just uh, change the port in order to register a new client. Okay. Um, okay, we're going also to join. Okay, now we're going to try one of the usernames that we already have in the database. Um, for example, if I entered Sanma and tried the password, it tells me that the username is already taken because in our database we check um, for a unique username. You can't uh, enter a username which is in, uh, already in our database. Uh, so let's try um, another user base, another uh, username, sorry. Uh, for example, Ahmed and try the password. Okay, here we go. Welcome, Ahmed. And we can, as usual, um, talk to Salma and say hi. And here, it uh, uh, Salma received it. 
Okay, that's uh, for uh, that's what we do for the registration board. Let's go to um, the login port. Okay, so let's uh, try to um, to log in with a new um, a new uh, user. Okay, let's try to log in this time. Uh, and let's try a username which is not in our database. For example, Hamada. Enter the password. Okay, it says that it's invalid username or password because Hamada is not in our database. So let's try um, Salma. Uh, no, let's try uh, Jackie. This one, uh, I showed you that it's in our database already. You know, here we have uh, Jackie, we have Ahmed as well because we added it. So we have Jackie. Uh, let's try to add uh, to try Jackie. Jackie, the password was uh, 123, so let's try another password. And it also said that it's invalid username or password because the password was wrong. So let's try the correct password and voila Jackie is logged in and it also can talk to Ahmed and say hi as you can see um, Ahmed received it and um, how do we do this in our code Okay, in the handle passwords, we have, um, okay, this function, we have a function which is uh, hash password was sold. What we do is that we take the password um, that, uh, you, that you write in, uh, in the login, okay, and we go to uh, the database and get the sold, which is in the record of that username, okay, and then we hash the password and the salt with the with the saved salt that we have um, using SHA as well and then here in validate user uh, we check if this password that is um, that we uh, that we uh, that we generated now with the password that you entered together with the saved salt is equal to the already saved password that we have in our database if it's equal then voila true return true and you are you are logged in if it is not then we will return false because uh, that means that the password that you entered is not the same password as um, it's saved in our database and here also we check a validate user checks also if the username is not already uh, saved in our database it's not in our uh, users database and that's it for the login board and that's the whole authentication board in our um, in our uh, project hello all my name is ahmed tawfiq my role in the project was to add steganography technique to hide messages that are sent in the chat steganography works by embedding the message bytes in the least significant bit in each pixel to implement it, we used the Stegano uh, Python library and we use the, met the methods hide uh, to hide a message in an image and uh, we use the, me the method reveal to extract the message that are embedded in the image. The maximum size of the message that can, that can be sent depends on the number of pixels of the image. The percentage between the number of bytes in the message and the number of pixels equals to 0.37. As we can see, the original image is on the left and the image that contains the secret message is on the right. The difference can't be noticed and the distortion is not visual. As we said, the capacity of the image depends on the number of pixels. For example, a low quality image like this one can take up to 18,000 bytes, but a higher resolution one, like this one, 
can take up to 200,000 bytes. The advantage of steganography is that an intruder or a man in the middle that captures the image will not be able to see the hidden message and the images alone will not be suspected to contain any hidden messages. My name is Sophia and I will be uh, and I'm responsible for the encryption part of the application. We use the RSA algorithm uh, from the crypto uh, library um, to encrypt the messages. When a client first connects to the server, uh, we generate a private public key pair. Uh, the the create key method is shown here. We uh, we generate a key of size ten twenty four and we export this key. Uh, here we send the key to the the public. We export the public key, and we send the public key to the server. Uh, here the public key is the last attribute, the last parameter uh, sent to the server. In the server side, uh, here is the last attribute where we add it to a peer class. The last attribute of the peer class is the key public key to be able to retrieve it after that. Uh, we then uh, convert the new peer to a string here and we send this peer to all uh, connected users at this, uh, to all connected users so that any user can encrypt messages and uh, send them to this new client uh, using his public key. So in order to send the message, so sending messages to peers, we need to specify the name of the receiver and the message, the name of the receiver and the message. So we, we retrieve the, the peer we are sending uh, the message to and uh, pass the message uh, alongside the peer to the encrypt RSA method. The encrypt RSA method uh, first retrieves the public key of the uh, peer and uh, then encrypt the message using the public key. On the receiver side, we uh, we decrypt the message using the our private key. That's it. Thank you.